What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over sound effects for our fighting game. Uh, specifically, we'll be going over, you can see we have character entrance sounds. We're also going to have hit sound effects. So player one and player two, they're going to make a random noise for like an effort sound or, or a pain sound. So just show you there's a variety there. And we can also uh, make specific sounds on specific attacks. So I'm going to give myself full super meter. Whoops, I accidentally threw him. That's the wrong one. There we go. So there you go. And I, this is just a sound effect episode. I kind of want to show you the general idea. You can do it for like specific attacks or make it randomized for different effort attacks. Or do it for a specific animations like the character animation doesn't have to be an attack but something we actually force as well so there's a lot of different options you have here and a lot of different routes you can take we will be doing menu sound effects separately uh, just because there's a few things you can do with that that makes it a little bit fancier and you don't need to do any of that in game so I figured I would skip that and make it a separate one okay so let's get into it today is going to be quite an easy episode you can see I've had I have uh, quite a few sound packs I've added, so thank you to all you guys on the Epic Store for providing these for free at some point. Uh, specifically, I'm using the human vocalizations today. I can post the plugin link in the description if you want to check it out. We've got a lot of good sound effects. Let's go into our mutant character BP and our anim BP for our mutant as well. Okay, so there's only one thing we're gonna have to change in code, and you don't even really have to do this in code, but I think it makes it a little bit easier and gives you the most flexibility. And then we're gonna add some stuff in the character BP and anim BP. All right, so let's go to the code. And we're going to add a blueprint implementable event that allows us to trigger a random sound effect from our choosing, like we can choose what the random pool is that it pulls from. Um, and we're going to trigger a sound effect when we call the function or the event. But scroll down to where you have your blueprint implementable events. And see, I have mine right here. So I call it play damage sound effect. I just made it a blueprint implementable event, but you can also make it blueprint callable if you want to be able to call it from blueprint which isn't a bad idea. This specific event is going to be for damage effects. So when you get hit, the character is going to have a list of sounds they can play to show that they've been hit, or, or I guess to sound out that they've been hit. Basically pain sounds and grunts. So that's why I'm, I don't feel it needs to be blueprint callable because I can do that all from the uh, code. However, feel free to add that and add other sound effects and other events that can be blueprint callable. Now, blueprint implementable events, uh, like many of the other functions we've done in this series, they are simply functions that you can call that have logic tied to them in blueprints, but not in code. So we don't have to fill it out like it's a function, like a C++ function or anything like that. So we are about 49 episodes in at this point, almost 50 episodes in on this tutorial series. So if you'd like to catch up or see if there's any other episodes that will be helpful to you. I will go ahead and leave the link to the fighting game playlist here and the very first episode here, back to back. That way you can check out individual episodes or go ahead and see if um, the very first episode is right for you. Otherwise, let's go figure out where we're gonna call our play damage sound effect function. So for me, I'm just going into take damage and I'm going to make sure that they are not blocking. So we've already got all this logic set up. I'm just going to call the function in here. If the character stays not equal to blocking. So essentially, if the uh, character is taking the full damage from an attack, then I'm going to play the damage sound effect. If they are to block the attack, we'll probably play a different sound effect. You know, kind of like a whiff or a whoosh sound effect. That way we know that the attack was blocked and the full power did not go through. So go ahead and call that implementable event in your take damage function right here. 
and then that'll be it for the code. We're just gonna trigger that, but you can put as many in here as you want. Again, put some when they block, put some when they do certain attacks, put some when, I don't know, anything. Taunts, everything. You can use them everywhere, and honestly, I always take for granted how many uh, sound effects there actually are in games until I start putting them in the games myself. I'm like, wow, there's a lot you have to think about. So yeah, feel free to play around with that. But we can go back into Unreal now. And what you can do is go into your mutant character BP and uh, make sure you built and compiled. I should have mentioned that. Make sure you build, build solution, and then compile in the code. Now, if you only want to use blueprints, I told you you could, you don't have to use code, then that's perfectly fine too. You don't actually need to make an event in here. You could have just made an event in your character. Add custom event and called it when we take damage within um, the blueprint. Specifically in our case, we take damage, or we call it take damage function once a active hitbox or a strike hitbox collides with the player or with the character. So if you wanna do that and you wanna keep it blueprint only, you can go ahead and add an event in here. And then when that collision event occurs, go ahead and call play damage sound effect on that character. So that's how you can do it in Blueprint. But the rest is going to be in Blueprint anyway. So, okay. Now, when you're in your mutant character BP or any Blueprint of that is a child of that class that we just made. So mutant character. This is a child of mutant character, which is a child of fighter template character. So this guy will have it. Go ahead and right click and just type. You can type event actually, and it'll help uh, it narrow down the search, but then just type in the name that you want, event play damage, and then you can see I've got nothing else. Click this, it'll bring up this node for you, and then we're going to basically pick a random value and grab it out of our damage sounds array and then play the sound. So let's set up our damage sounds array. You can add a new variable by clicking plus, and then you can go and click on the variable type and search for the type you want to set it to. We want to set it to a sound cue in this case and then you can select object reference. And then you can set a sound with that, but we actually want a sound cue array because we want a random amount or a random sound out of this array to be chosen. If for whatever reason you don't want that and you only want one sound, that's perfectly fine. Then you don't need to make an array and you can just use damage sound and plug it into the play sound 2D. But I figured I'd give you the option. So uh, make sure you compile, otherwise it won't let you add values to your array here. And the way you make an array is just um, click on the variable type in the details panel right here. So when you click on the um, variable that you just made, if you go over to the details panel, wherever it may be on your screen, go to variable type, click on the little box next to the variable type and select the three by three squares, that grid. Otherwise you'll be on the pill, which is just the variable. We want the array. Then compile again once you've made an array. And you should be able to add elements to this. So you can just hit plus, 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 or plus, plus, or however many times you want to do it. And you will go ahead and have all these different sound effects. When you uh, select it, you'll be able to choose which ones you want to add. And you can even search for them like this. So I've added three uh, that I just had in the project from the human vocalizations folder. Obviously, feel free to pick whatever sounds you want. But those are the three I've picked. Then you can drag it onto the screen, get it, and then type get again, and you'll get a copy, which means you'll get a copy of this index. And we want to give it a random integer. Now the way a random integer works is it will, and I'll tell you this, but it will return a uniformly distributed random number between zero and max, minus one. So what's actually going on here is it's going to just return a value at the index that you want. Um, and, or a random value between zero and that. So for example, if it's between zero and zero, it's always gonna be zero. And we don't want that, obviously. We want it to be a value that can fit within the array. Now my damage sounds array has three elements. These on the left here are your indices, zero, one, and two, remember? In programming, you start at the zero index and go up. So zero, one, and two. So it's the max minus one, as it said in the comment. 
So we don't want to put two, otherwise our last sign will get left out. We want to put three. And then it can be zero, one, and two as the answers from this integer. And then we want to get that value and then drag that, drag off of that and hit play sound 2D. And that's how you get what you see above. Now you can change a bunch of settings with this, the volume, the pitch, the start time, concurrency settings, and the owning actor. I'm not gonna do any of that for now, but feel free to do it. Um, I'd recommend if like certain sounds are quieter than other sounds that you change the actual sound levels of that effect as opposed to playing with it in here. But there are times when you'd wanna use this for all cases, so. There you go. And uh, just for the record, play sound 2D means that it will play and basically everyone will hear it. It's not going to be played at a certain location. Like if you're doing an RPG and someone's calling out to you from the side, well then you want the sound effect to come from that person, that character. In this case, we just want the sound to be played so that everyone can hear it. We don't really care about distance or anything like that. Uh, so that's why we're doing 2D. All right, and then the mutant and BP stuff is also going to be easy. We're just going to show you how to add some um, sound effects off anim notifies and transition events and things like that. So in my start super transition, which is when he flexes and gets ready to do his ultimate attack, all I've done is I've just went ahead and once the camera changes over to be the flexing camera as opposed to the default camera, we then play the play a sound effect, play sound 2D. And I've hard coded it here, meaning I've just called play sound 2D and then selected my asset. You can select any of them here. Um, you don't need to store it as a variable, although you can feel free to. Just, again, giving you that freedom. So feel free to make a variable that says like super sound or just have a, an array of all your sounds and grab the proper index. Do it a bunch of different ways. Just be careful. Sounds can be very large, they're files. Just make sure you're not bringing around like 500 gigabytes with you <laughs> on your character of just sound files and you'll be fine. Okay, and then uh, lastly for sound effects, I went ahead and put one on the entrance sequence, which is, you know, at the very start when he's doing his little roar. Um, after it switches to the camera again, and once it sets the visibility to hidden, I just call the sound 2D here, and I've also hard-coded that one, and that's how you can put in all your sound effects. So this is specifically off of an animation transition event. So you can see this is start entrance sequence, which is what happens when I click on my entrance sequence. And then the other one is my start super transition, which comes from, I have to find the right node, I think it's this one right here. Yep, which is the actual uh, animation transition. So you can put them wherever you want. You can also use the actual anim notifies in an animation to perform it. Like for when we're doing our super combo and we have the specific hits set up in anim notifies, we could have a pain sound effect added in here. You have a lot of flexibility here. Real quick before we wrap this video up, I do wanna um, actually edit and, and, guys, and show you guys a bug fix for something that I did in the entrance episode, if you wanna check that out. So uh, we're gonna be changing up the functionality a bit here. Before what we were doing is we were setting the view target with blend back uh, to the default camera once the mutant was finished with his animation. And that's good, but the problem is you could see kind of a frame or two sometimes when it would go to the default camera instead of the other character's animation, and we don't want that. So we're gonna be doing the same logic that we're doing here, but we're just gonna change up the check. So instead of doing it all, all the time, what we're gonna do is this. We're gonna grab the mutant character reference and the other player um, of the mutant character reference and check both of them to see if they're ready for entrance. So this is basically player one and player two, are they ready for entrance? If they're both ready, then we're gonna go ahead and set the view target with blown back to the default camera reference. That way we go back to the default camera as opposed to going to another character or something like that. And then we're going to go ahead and set the HUD visibility back to visible. Otherwise, if it's false, we wanna grab the other player and set them to be is ready for entrance. Because we know that player one is gonna be ready for entrance, which is the first player um, that's gonna be doing this, which means it's gonna be this reference that's gonna be accessing this first. So if it's false, then we want the other player to be set to true. Does that make sense? And it just makes it a little bit cleaner. I wanted to point that out. I like to point out the bugs and the things that could be cleaner uh, 
as we do them and as we figure them out. You see now I start my stage, and you see no flicker, no frame in between. It goes character entrance to character entrance, and just looks a lot nicer. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope this helps you with your sound effects and any other sound needs that you had for your game. We'll be doing more sound effects on the menu, and we'll also be doing a, a specific episode on music because of the way we have to transfer it between levels. If this helps you, please subscribe. It does more for the channel than anything else you can do, and I just really appreciate it. it. Let's me know that I'm doing a good job and kind of tailoring the tutorials to what you guys want to see, which is important because I'm trying to help teach you guys how to make your own game. I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon and YouTube membership supporters. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for believing in me and taking the extra steps to make sure that the tutorials can survive. Really appreciate you. You can get different perks if you join, so you can just click the little join button below the video. Check it out if you want. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord. There's a link in the description below. I'd be happy to help you with any of the problems you had, and we'll get you sorted, so no worries. Lastly, guys, if you want to come support us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash ontheroad27, you can come hang out with me as I play Dark Souls and other very difficult games using very difficult challenges like socks on my hands or eye patches or play with the controls inverted and just a bunch of stuff. So, all right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.